it was very close. You see that crater up there? I basically have to stay right until a little bit after that. Then cut left, then right. So the other day, Nanax was asking me, like, what's the highest, safest input current limit to the AV? 120, actually, it's like one third of the ratings are. Ooh, okay. Interesting. What is going on, people? I am back at this monster hill. I'm actually going to redo the hill climb with the super flux set at the same motor current settings as the float wheel at 120, minus 120, maximum current 220. Last time it demonstrated both were just absolute torque monsters to get up the hill. It was very close. Obviously the super flux made it, but the float wheel was extremely close to making it. I wanted to show how the boards stacked up at their full capacity head to head. Obviously this is lifted, so it's a little bit higher than usual, but the float wheels tire is bigger than the Trail Pro on the Superflux. So the clearance is approximately the same at about five inches. The float wheel never scraped the nose, so I think it's a moot point. But anyway, let's go check it out. I'm going to do a screen recording of the real-time data, and we will do three runs and track all that good stuff, motor temp, ESC temp, duty cycle. Battery is identical to the last test, about 85%. Will the Superflux make it up this monster hill at the same motor current settings as the float wheel ADV Pro. Let's find out. Alrighty, we got motor current settings here. Let's keep it on this. Oh God, there's a bee next to me. <laughs> mm, it's on the phone. saturation yet oh shit it's too oh it's running out oh okay Woo. gave out at the steepest point definitely more of a challenge okay run number two struggling for sure interesting so when it's stacked up in the same current uh, the super flux does struggle at similar places as the float wheel and on the first try it gave out pretty much at the same spot too it's still a crazy amount of torque way more than hypercore and this is the battle of the titans right here come on let's try to make it up Dude, it's still not crunching yet though, which is crazy. God, it keeps running. Woo! I gotta find the line too. It's just like so fucking ruddy here. Woo! Okay. Interesting. I, oh. Okay, so I was checking the first hill climb that I did. I was trying to figure out what line I took. And I think I figured out how to go up this a little more efficient. You see that crater up there? I basically have to stay right until a little bit after that. Then cut left, then right a little bit, and then left at the steepest part. Let's try it again. 10-5. Especially with some getting some voltage sag right now. Let's try one more with the maxed out motor current. We have upped the motor current back 
to the max settings for the Super Flux. And let's see if there's any difference here. All right, Super Flux, come on. Yeah, already feeling way more. Yup. Oh, just powers through. Woohoo! Just climb up everything. So, in conclusion, guys, I would say the Super Flux is more powerful than the Canon Core at the highest settings. But if you compare them neck to neck at the same motor current settings, it appears that the Canon Core has more power. The float wheel made it up way more than the Superflux, uh, more than halfway multiple times uh, at the 120 setting. Mixed results here, I would say if you compare, if you set your, both boards at the same settings, float wheel is gonna give more but then it peaks out because uh, float wheel says that the absolute max that they can safely recommend is 130 minus 130 200 a few of our guys might uh, uh, probably have seen the video uh, from the Mad Max uh, uh, comparing the cannon core to the super flux so the other day Mad Max was asking me like, what's the highest um, safe, safest uh, uh, input current limit to the AV, so I said like 120, that's a really safe, you can see that 120 actually is like one third of the ratings are on the MOSFET. ADV V1 controller, which is at 100 volts, 380 amps. The ADV has uh, basically the best MOSFET uh, industry. I told Mad Max to, you know, put the input current to like 120, limited to 120. Basically, there is a lot more potential to be out of the cannon core if we uh, upgrade the whole electronic system. We have already started working on developing the gen uh, two generation, the, the second generation uh, electronic system for the AV. We'll be using some similar layout as to the Kingsong S22 motherboard here versus Superflux. You're gonna get much more out of the motor, but also it's gonna run up temps, I think, if you sustain um, those settings. Because I have the float box set up. The float box is an aluminum controller casing that reduces MOSFET temps and uh, other electrical components by a lot. So that makes a big difference. Both machines are absolute monsters. You know, they, they climb this hill, this crazy gnarly hill, very impressively, so you can't go wrong with either. DIY, which is you have to source all the parts for your board, versus float wheel is totally assembled. I mean, there is some assembly acquired, but what I mean is it's completely sourced for you, all the parts, especially the major components like BMS, battery, controller, ESC, and then you have the benefit of using those parts into your DIY projects as well, especially with their very exciting um, V2 electrical component upgrade kit where you can use the V1 uh, components in your recycled XR or possibly even GT down the road. So very exciting. Just depends which route you want to go. If you want everything sourced for you, the float wheel is absolutely the way to go. If you have everything sourced already, you go with the DIY route and the Superflex motor and you are going to be my GoPro battery died so I'm gonna do the outro on my phone here just want to say thank you everybody for the awesome feedback on the other video the motor current settings adjustment was a game changer in differentiating the two motor outputs and performance anyway more videos coming I appreciate you guys enjoy both of these exciting VESC boards that whichever one you want to enjoy get both have fun out there It's not going to be any e-waste. You can still use them. It's going to make your one wheels run like super powerful. If you are considering about buying the ADV V1 right now, you can go ahead and do it. 
I, I don't see right now. Uh, if you can, if you do that, you have you basically have a, a, a set of a free and old uh, ADVV1 controlling system that can be dropped into uh, maybe GT, maybe XR. It's going to make the GT a lot more powerful. Seriously. I hope you guys ride safely and enjoy your ADV. Ciao. Mm, it's on the phone. Jesus. Dude, it won't get off me. <laughs> I know, man. Getting on this. <gasps> oh, jeez.